So Gabe and I had the opportunity recently to hop into the pre-close beta build for For the King 2, one of our most anticipated co-op titles of the year. And yes, you heard me right, pre-closed beta. I didn't even know that was a thing before now. It's our first time having the pleasure of exclusively previewing a game, and it really is an honor to be doing the sequel, because For the King was a game we really loved and enjoyed back at the launch of our channel. So if you've never heard of the first or loved every second of it, we're here to break it all down as best as possible, give our thoughts on how the co-op is shaping up, and wrap it all in a nice bow for your first look at For the King 2. Jesus! Oh my god, Merlin! 15 and 2 eighths! Merlin oh, is fuck. an absolute animal, dude. Yo! Yeah. Let's see. Whoa! Oh my god, Merlin! <laughs> Merlin! Merlin. Happy birthday, shit. buddy! <laughs> this is crazy! Oh, the bird! So what the bird would have been? Oh god! Oh! Uh, Give me that two. Oh, and he whipped oh, it! Yes. That was oh, huge! Let's go, Fendril! Let's go, Fendril, my man! <laughs> If you've played the original for the king, then this sequel should look very familiar to you. But if you never got your hands on the indie gem, then here's a quick overview. Before you can dive into your tabletop adventure, you and your friends first need to get your party in order. There's four classes to choose from, blacksmith, scholar, hunter, and stable boy, with two additional classes, the herbalist and alchemist, unlocked through gameplay. Once your party is set, you can now dive into your first adventure titled A Mysterious Stranger. Think of these adventures as separate modes or even like D&D campaigns. The original ended up with 7 of these, like one set in an icy tundra or one that was just a straight up dungeon crawl. And we do know that For the King 2 will have 5 of these adventures at launch. The beginning of this adventure tasks you with rescuing a rebel leader and you're given 2 different objectives on the map. So once your character's turn comes around, you're free to move around the board to either jump into a fight, go to a town, or engage with an activity. There's all sorts of things to do on the board like enemy camps, hero statues, sanctums, and even hidden encounters you simply stumble upon. It's worth checking these out since you can get XP, bonuses, or loot as a reward. Just be careful not to split the party over it, or do split the party if you're feeling so bold. Over the course of your adventure, you'll work towards completing the main quest while trying to level up and finally stopping by town to make sure you're stacked up and ready for your next big challenge. And that's pretty much the gameplay loop. But before we wrap up here, I do want to mention a couple other mechanics at play like the Chaos Meter and the Day and Night Cycle. After completing our first quest, the Queen's Guard was now on to us. As such, there was a timer at the top of the screen counting down every turn we took. This is the Chaos Meter. Once we hit one of those purple hearts, we were ambushed by the Queen's Guard and forced to fight them. This Chaos Meter will change depending on your quest, sometimes you'll be forced into a fight, and other times you could fail the adventure entirely if you simply take too long to complete your objective. Lastly, as you're taking turns, you'll see the map change from day to night and different things will be available to you, like the Night Market which sells some really great loot. Finally, with all that out of the way, let's talk about co-op. The biggest change you're going to notice from this sequel is the change from 3 player to 4 player co-op and we already love that decision. When we first dove into this beta we made the huge mistake of trying to play on a higher difficulty with just 2 characters because we remembered how it was weird how one of us in the past had to control our third player while the other didn't but that was a terrible decision and we paid for it pretty quickly. Relaunching the campaign on the lower difficulty which is recommended and with 4 characters which is also recommended, was totally the right move. There's still great customization when you start a campaign, from your character's name, to the class, to the look, and you have to decide on what items and traits each character goes in with. This was the first of many examples I'm gonna talk about where it felt great to toss back and forth our ideas, in particular here concerned over the most optimal starting build for each class and character, which again is something we continued throughout our time with the game. The team at Iron Oak Games deserves a lot of credit for making the game seamless in co-op. We rarely felt like there were any barriers that held us back from making decisions and communicating. On that note, it was also really easy to set up co-op through our server and the host keeps the save as the game is going. It's really straightforward, basic stuff. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it. And one other quick aside, we were missing the ability to see each other determining where they would move on the map, which the team has already said will be a feature. I'm assuming it's just a bug we face in this pre-close beta. 
Getting back to the meat of it though, that change to four players has been made with some smart decisions, like giving the non-active players more stuff to do than we saw in the original game. While waiting for your friend to take their turn, you can now look at your party's inventory, or check what's in the town your friend is visiting, or freely look around the map. It adds to that constant communication and decision making I mentioned before. Which brings me to the combat, the other big difference in the sequel. Now admittedly we did only play for 4 hours, and the first hour was us getting wrecked in that first attempt, so we didn't get to push the new combat mechanics as much as we'd like. But that same tactical decision making we experienced in the first game came rushing right back. Every move you need to decide what's best for the whole party, and having that friend that you bounce ideas off of is really fun. I also loved how after each battle they kept that pass around mechanic so each piece of loot feels like a lottery on which character will be rewarded. That was really fun, really smart to keep that. The new row is one of the bigger things in the sequel to the battle, so you have a front row and a back row, and it adds a lot more tactics to the fight than you'd expect, although we didn't get to do too much of it in this early campaign. The general idea is that you can now move around the battlefield a little bit, and you're gonna wanna put your ranged people in the back, your people with shields in the front so they can protect the ranged people. Maybe you wanna spread out so that you don't get hit by like a big focus splash damage. And there's even moves where you can move the opponent like further back or further up, depending on how you want to attack them. It's, it's really good stuff. I can definitely see how it's only gonna make battles more tense than they already are. So overall, really happy with the combat. And just overall, I'd say the co-op is still familiar, but tweaked in really smart ways. I keep coming back to seamless. It's a word I used recently in our War Tales impressions, which makes sense, because they're kind of similar games where you're doing a tactical, seemingly solo experience that is suddenly in co-op, but they made it so seamless that you don't even really think about it. You're exchanging your gear, your money, checking out each other's builds, changing who's gonna control who, it's just so easy. Having each of us control two felt so much better than when in the first game we had to control two versus one, and it made it so that nobody felt like they had more responsibility than the other. We did face a couple of bugs, like I mentioned earlier, but that goes without saying in a pre close beta, everything outside of that was all positive from us as far as the co-op is concerned. I really like what they're doing with this game and how they're moving it forward, and I think they're making the right decisions to make co-op even better in For the King 2. Let's oh, nice. It's a lot of gold. Yeah, hell yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. That Holy was worth it, my shit. dude. Oh my god. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's awesome. Should I yeah, give this to No, no, no. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe? maybe? It's, it's, I, I think it's more can... for you, but... I'll see if I can wield it. If not, we'll give it to Grant. While playing this brief slice of For the King 2, it really brought me back to D&D as my friends and I recently wrapped up our two year campaign. For the King 2 nails everything that makes D&D and tabletop gaming fun, but in a video game form. Everything in For the King 2 is done by rolling the dice as you can tell, and that keeps things endlessly entertaining. One time we rolled the dice on a challenge that totally should have gone our way, yet failed despite it being like a 2% chance. It was pretty hilarious, honestly. Oh, what? Dude, that was so unlikely. In combat, it's super hyped to see your character pull off a last second dodge as they're hanging by a thread or pull off a crit to end the fight. Just like in D&D, you never really know what's going to happen and sharing that with friends is a lot of fun. Now, if you're coming into this from the original game, you might be thinking not much has changed. And on the surface, you could be right. But like Andrew mentioned, there's a couple changes like four player co-op or the battle grid that have a bigger impact than you might think. On the whole, the game also feels a lot more polished and we're really enjoying the new art direction and better graphics engine. There's a couple new mechanics like hiring mercenaries, befriending bees, and vehicles that we're excited to get a better look at with future previews too. So for this first look, we came away pretty happy with our time with the game. It very much reminded us why we loved the original in the first place and has us thinking that For the King 2 is already on the path to being a great sequel. All right guys, before you head out, let me cover some stuff that you might want to know about For the King 2. Like the fact that there is currently a closed beta going on in Steam, starts today all the way until the 16th of this month, and you can sign up for it in the Steam page. The game will eventually come to Steam, hopefully sometime this year, with a console release date after that. 
and yes, it has local and online co-op. The best thing you can do if you're interested in this title is wishlist it on Steam. It makes a huge difference to smaller developers. We're not sponsored by them or anything. We're just trying to help out a smaller team. I think that's really cool. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching as always. We'd appreciate any likes, comments, or sweet little subscriptions. If this was good for you, if you're more hyped for For the King 2, let us know how we did. We're really excited to have an opportunity like this. It's cool, it's new for our channel. It's cool to be asked to do things like this. And that's because you guys come here, you watch, you support us, and we appreciate it. So we'll catch you next time on another episode of the Co-op Bros.